couple of hard days when things don't go my way and what happens in my business because yeah, I'm a billionaire's son, but that's a billionaire's son. That doesn't make me a billionaire. But I am a millionaire in my own right from what I've worked for and achieved. And did I use all the contacts and all the tools that I had around me, what has been inherited from my father? Yes, I did. But there's so many other people out there that don't even do that, that are just a billionaire's or a millionaire's son. Anybody out there that knows me, that's done business with me, which would be uh, a, an awful lot of people. I've done business with people from one end of the Richter scale to the other. And they would all vouch for me that I've been working since I've been 12 years old. There's probably very few industries that I haven't been involved in. Where's that hunger come from? You're a, you're a billionaire son. Why do you need to work? I wouldn't say that it was so much a hunger. It's just more of the upbringing that I had that uh, that's what we done. The men get up and they go to work and try to provide as best life as possible for our families. Mm -hmm. So tell me, you know, where did this all sort of start from? Like, you're in primary school, you're eight years old. What was life looking like for you? To be honest with you, I, I remember my dad buying his first mobile home park and I was in school, in primary school at Gidea Park. And we left and we moved out of uh, Essex to Potter's Bar. And there I went to a school called Cuffley. And my entrepreneurial life, should I say, hadn't really started until I was 10 or 11. Now, I'd always been around my dad doing deals, gone to work with my dad for days. That was ever from being four or five years old. And that when I went into senior school, I then developed or learned that I had a very uh, natural ability to trade. And I used to buy and sell sweets. Now, we used to buy and sell sweets from the off license. And then I went to work with my granddad one day and found a cash and carry. So I was then, by, because I wasn't, the, I wasn't the first person to think of the idea of selling sweets in school. I see somebody do it and thought, right, what a great idea that is. And then obviously they was buying their stuff from the off license. And then as time went on, I found out where the off license got their stuff from, which was a cash and carry. Mm -hmm. And then I used to go and buy my wham bars or refreshers mm -hmm. from there. And then following on from that, I purchased a van and I used to go around to industrial estates and off licenses offering toilet paper, high visibility vests, work gloves, hard hats. Basically, I used to know a couple of wholesalers. How I got into it was my grandfather used to do it. So I used to know a couple of wholesalers that I used to go to and buy this and, and, and offer it. And some people used to buy it because they would like to see a young person do well. Some people would turn their nose up and think, why ain't this kid in school? Mm. Um, but what it did do, it taught me an awful, awful, awful lot about business and people's character and, and pretty much knowing what you're up against within someone saying a few words to you.